All right, guys, here we are, back to work on the old trophy truck. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know I'm going to be doing a question and answer about this project specifically in the near future. So if you have any questions at all, like why I did it this way, why I didn't do it that way, what I'm expecting, that kind of thing, go ahead and ask those in the comment section below, and I'll try to fit those in when I make that video. Otherwise, where we left off. Uh, last thing you saw, I painted it. I was getting ready to install the engine and transmission, but they were still separate, and before I can put them together, I wanted to do the J mod to the transmission. So let's just jump in right there. All right, guys, first things first, we're gonna pull this pan, and together we'll see what the magnet's looking like and uh, what the fluid is looking like. From what I could tell uh, from just sucking it out with the little Mighty Vac, it was pretty good. I would say it's a little bit darker than I'd like. I would like them to change the fluid a little bit more often, but I can say that about just about every vehicle I've ever worked on, except for my own. All right, let's take a closer look and uh, get a little light on it. All right, when you get up close, the fluid looks a little bit darker on camera than it does in real life. It's got a decent color to it. I'm not seeing anything too, too bad. But the magnet here, it's got just a little bit more metal in it than I like to see. And I'll see if I can show it to you up close, but there's a few little strands of clutch material that are a little bit longer, indicating that the clutches are just a little closer to wearing out than I'd like. So I'm going to take a closer look at it. All right, guys, I'm inspecting the magnet here. I've got it outdoors so I can get a little bit better look on it. You see I've got this screwdriver here, and I'm just kind of moving around the little particles. What I want to see is I want to see just the smallest little bits. If I see any long pieces or anything that would qualify as shavings, then I'm going to scrap the idea of doing the J-Mod. But as of right now, it really just looks, it looks like it has a decent amount of material but it looks all like totally normal wear. Nothing, uh, nothing too long or nasty. So I'll keep checking it out before I make my decision, but otherwise everything on it looks good. You see the fluid's nice and clean. A lot of times you'll see, especially at the low points, you'll see some real dark areas, or you'll see you know little bits of shaving, or little tiny little grainy bits. I'm not seeing any of that, it looks good. All right, guys, I've been hemming and hawing a little bit back and forth as to whether or not I should do this J-Mod, but the more I look at it, you see the fluid everywhere where I can see the fluid. It just looks like a nice cherry red, and all of the metal that was on the magnet was just that really, really, really fine metal that is consistent with normal wear. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger, give it a shot. I do have a spare 4R70W uh, transmission tucked away over there behind the little 2CV in case I do need that in the future. So... Since I've got a spare, I figure I'll give it a shot. Now I've got a little work table over here along with my tools set up. I'm just going to start removing the components and setting them aside. I've done this before, but it's been a long time. So I've got my little laptop over here set up so I can watch my little how-to to just be refreshed so I don't miss anything. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what a J-Mod does, it's basically just like a shift kit. I'm going to remove the valve body here, and then there's a separator plate in between, and then I'm going to enlarge some of the holes in that separator plate. I'm not going to do a how-to because there's already a fantastic one out there on YouTube, but I will add a link to that in my description. So let's just get started.
Well, I am super happy that this valve body gasket came off in one piece. Sometimes they'll get stuck in the corners here and it can be a nightmare, but I got the razor blade under it and it just kind of just kind of slowly pulled it right off. I'm hoping for the same on this. There's a couple things I wanted to show you. There's a little screen in here. Let me see if I can show it to you there. Just this little tiny guy. That's in fantastic shape. No boogers on there. There's another one in here. Again, nothing inside. Fantastic to see. So the more I'm looking around, the happier I'm getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and suck all this fluid out of here, whatever I can get out. I'm gonna remove this, uh, this gasket here, and then I'll start uh, drilling the holes in the uh, separator plate. All right, I've got my separator plate all marked up. There's only two drill bits required. Uh, these five holes, you've got one, two, three, four, and then number five, those are gonna be 760 fourths, and then this one right here is gonna be a 332nd. This one is for the reverse engagement. It'll actually engage into reverse faster. That'll be nice since it's two wheel drive. If I have to rock it in and out of a little bit of sand or dirt that it gets stuck into. Uh, the rest of these, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but I do know that they make it shift from one gear to the other faster. So let me get this on the drill press and get it drilled out. I've got uh, 400 grit sandpaper here to help clean up some of these holes. Now there was a couple little burrs on here that I don't want to get with a file because I don't want to elongate the hole. So I've got a drill bit that's a 960 fourths. It's one size larger than the 760 fourths. And I'm by hand just kind of spinning it around the hole. And it's helping to get those little burrs down so that the 400 grit sandpaper can come in afterwards and clean it up. Alrighty guys, now it's time to install those gaskets. I've got my eight check balls in along with that little screen and that little magnetic uh, check valve. Now I bought all these parts, gosh, quite a while ago, a couple months back. I don't remember how much exactly it was. It's like um, around 20 bucks for the filter. And then uh, both of the gaskets for the separator plate, I think they're like 16 bucks. Now this is the gasket that comes with the filter. You can go ahead and throw that right in the trash. If you want to reuse the factory gasket, this is a molded rubber gasket. So it's got these little ridges here, they compress when you tighten it down and then uh, they hold pressure. This is a miserable pile of you know what that's just gonna leak and leave you on the side of the road with no transport.
All right, I've got the transmission mounted up to the engine. I gave the uh, cross members here the old rattle can to protect them from the rust. And I'm underneath the buggy right now, getting ready to drop her down onto the uh, engine and transmission here. All right, guys, I got the engine and transmission installed, no problem. It's a tight squeeze, but everything fit. You can see how close the uh, exhaust manifold is to the metal here, so I might have to hammer that out. On this side, I was a little bit proactive, and you can see I hammered it out beforehand, and I've got plenty of room here. I could fit my whole hand in there. But uh, otherwise, yeah, everything went great. It's all mounted up. I still have to, I'm still drilling some holes here so I can put in some larger bolts, but I've got the little bolts in here for this support. I've got the drive shaft in. So it's, it's certainly getting there. I was starting to misplace some of my parts because I ended up, it's been a while since I was working on this. So I've got laid out on the floor here, some of the next things that need to go in. Obviously the exhaust, I've got the hoses in the front. I had to take off the alternator in order to uh, attach the engine hoist, the exhaust, transmission cooler lines that's that custom power steering line I'm not sure what that is I think that might be a, a power steering reservoir line of some sorts but a few more little goodies have got to throw on so I'm just gonna start throwing parts at it and seeing what sticks I forgot to show you I've got the fenders all painted and ready to be installed it came out real nice all right guys, so I worked on this last night. I wasn't able to throw as many parts at it as I wanted. I was able to get the parking brake installed. You see, I've got that pedal there and that is all hooked up. That's a nice little feature to have for testing. And then I was able to get this rear fender temporarily mounted. I'm gonna be doing it with uh, pop rivets. And so I've got them installed. I just haven't popped them out because it's still nice to be able to crawl in and out underneath here rather than having to keep going in through the window. But I was really eager to see what it looked like because you know, the sides are so flat. Having these nice fenders on there really makes it look nicer. Plus, this wheel well was just enormous. And since I'm gonna start putting the decals on here, I really wanted to kind of have an idea of what it's looking like. So this is where I'm gonna leave this video. I'm not exactly sure when the next one is gonna come out on this. I'm working as fast as I can, but I do have some other projects. But at least we've got an engine and a transmission in there mounted with the J-Mod to the transmission. And then of course, all that work done to the engine to make it nice and reliable. So. She's getting there, slowly but surely, but uh, we'll get there.